Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel for the WCW Saturday Night Review Series. October 10th, uh, 1992 is here, and we are moving towards Halloween Havoc in a couple of weeks. This is a show that is joined in progress, do I assume, to a baseball game running along. It even gives us the little this is being joined in progress deal uh, in the beginning of the program. Also, if you're new here, please check out our, our over 1,200 audios available in old school and new school wrestling, everything from Mid-South to Smoky Mountain to World Class and now WCW, uh, Superstars of Wrestling, Wrestling Challenge, and all points in between. Enhancement matches where we start Eaton and Anderson versus two enhancement guys. Eaton cranking up on uh, enhancement guy number one, whose name I did not catch because they joined the match in progress. Lots of basic stuff here. Um, and there's about two minutes left in the contest. Anderson hits the spine buster, gets the win. Bill Watts announces the spin the wheel, make the deal concept. The idea behind it is 12 matches on a wheel, including one spinner's choice. Uh, the combatants of Sting and Jake Roberts must sign a waiver holding WCW harmless of all indemnity related to the situation. Um, and then ultimately, um, you know, the nature of everything is going forward. And Jake Roberts uh, is in front of the spin the wheel, make the deal basically saying that if it lands on the spinner's choice, Sting is going to be done. Both guys agree to uh, the concept of the Hold Harmless Agreement. Sting says he'll do anything to take out Jake Roberts. Sting with black and white face paint, which was pretty cool at the time. Um, and we quickly move along into another match. Uh, Hardboy Harrison and uh, who is, I guess, our, uh, Hardboy Bobby Walker, actually. Uh, who is making his debut here. I've got to grab my phone. So I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. And as mentioned, the matches here are better than many for the time period. There's a lot of um, a lot of focus in the WCW approach to things, which ultimately may not be uh, always completely directed the way people want to go, but it's also... You know, I mean, they, with the spin the wheel, make the deal thing, they were at least trying a concept that, to be honest, as Bill Watts announced, they're trying to settle, settle scores. The unsanctioned nature, and they list all the matches, including the, um, the process of, of the everything. Uh, then going into the Shane Douglas match, as, as we left off with, um, Shane Douglas and, uh, Bobby Walker, I mean, it's not... Bobby Walker certainly not a guy that they would in, invest in uh, long term, and he had his legal issues later. Shane Douglas is someone they would invest in for later, obviously, but not f without him leaving to go to ECW first. And, I mean, there was his tag run with Steamboat, which lasted probably six or eight months in total from uh, derivation of the team to Douglas leaving. The challenge becomes... Shane Douglas never really found himself until he went to ECW. Walker, on the other hand, manages to hit some drop kicks, doesn't get all he wants on them, and, uh, um, you know, gets enough. I mean, it's a basic squash match here. Um, Shane Douglas finally getting the victory for his team with the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Again, the inference that he was doing that as an homage to uh, Magnum TA is interesting. I don't know why. You wouldn't necessarily bring TA back to manage. That would be an option. Um, as he was still with the company here in 1992. Cactus Jack cutting a promo for the Barbarian. Barbarian does uh, body slam challenges, for lack of a better term. Taking uh, his punishment like a man, so to speak. I, think, I don't think it was this week, but there also is a vignette. Probably, I believe, the next week with him getting a cinder block broken over his back, which doesn't exactly seem like a pleasure, pleasure, pleasurable thing. Marcus Alexander Bag Bagwell up next in an enhancement match here. Bagwell considered to be Rookie of the Year for 1992. Um, 
he is there for Starcade 91. I remember him being part of that. But anyway, um, arm bars, arm locks, and the basic stuff here. Bagwell not really finding himself in a major angle till he does the tag thing with Scorpio in 93 or so. Uh, that is, of course, the uh, major, I guess, push for Chugul Scorpio comes in 93, although he does enter, I believe, as tag team partner uh, to Ron Simmons at a Clash of the Champions in 1992. Um, needless to say, you know, basic stuff, clotheslines, Bagwell really is trying to be your old-school 80s babyface in the early 90s, and it's not working as well as they would like, although it does work better than it would work even five years later. Uh, interestingly enough, Bagwell using the perfect flex, although not called that, as his finish. We go to a Halloween Havoc review or a Halloween Havoc hype segment, promos by Jake Roberts, where he promises to finish Sting once and for all. The body slams on the Barbarian are again re-shown. Barbarian was basically doing a bump and grind. Simmons saying that no one can put him down. No one's going to take the title from him. We see, with the spin the wheel, make the deal wheel in the background, the literal wheel. In the background, we see um, Brian Pillman and Steve Austin basically going to get a shot at the Tag Team Championships of, of uh, Rhodes and Wyndham in a non-title affair, but this is the, I guess, the beginning of the foundation of the Hollywood Blondes, really, um, although they don't really come into full force until 1993. They're returning, at least for the last bit of a little while. Scotty Flamingo uh, is up next in a contest. I still love the Scotty Flamingo character. I still think they could have done more with it. I know it's hokey, I know it's it's there, but I tend to like wrestling with characters more than moves um, because characters can can get you emotionally invested. Moves, while they may be fun to look at, don't get you to invest. Uh, the Z-Man Tom Zink is his opponent, and uh, to see Raven do a flare strut, strut or a Buddy Rogers strut is just interesting. He struts after a hip toss, of all things. Um, needless to say... Hard shots there, um, Irish whip, and ultimately roll up and, uh, you know, takes him over. Ultimately, the takeover is there. Um, and then, you know, kind of seeing that for what it is, uh, some, some, wrist locks and arm bars and all of that along the way um and also me grabbing my phone apparently we will be right back for the second time right after this but again that process with even the scotty flamingo gimmick and and that being done by some point in 93 because that's when um polo the johnny polo thing starts in late 93 early 94 just it's interesting that wcw had creative, albeit somewhat cartoonish characters, but cartoonish for 1992 made sense, but they never really got to a place of deeper understanding, and there's issues as it relates to, um, you know, kind of full commitment to characters. Um, so, Z-Man, you know, does the the old ring the bell thing with the head between the knees, kind of basic stuff, nothing that really should have been or or ends up being what it could have been. Uh, finally, Tom Zink does get a victory in what I would consider an upset for the time, maybe not for the brand of how Zink had been pushed in the previous, what, uh, maybe two years, but at the same time, um, putting... Scotty Flamingo under Z-Man at that point seems odd, but we continue forward with the remainder of that match, cross body being the way he gets the victory. Um, then we go to a, uh, I guess you'd say a personality up close and personal piece with Eric Watts. Eric Watts saying that he, in fact, d was not uh, nervous or overly bothered about his 
um, his legacy with his father. Tony Schiavone mentions other second-generation people such as the Funks and Dusty and Dustin Rhodes and, and the like, and, and Watts basically claims that he worries mainly about himself, only about himself. We go back to another promo, this time the promo with Jake Roberts and Cactus Jack in front of the spin the wheel, make the deal set. Goofy as can be, but it at least gets the ferocity and, and I guess you'd say danger of the match over. Enhancement match next up with uh, Dallas Page and Benny Vegas, the Vegas connection. Um, and, I mean, you know, Dallas takes the, I guess you'd say, the majority of the match. The, the story told is pretty basic. Punches, kicks, clotheslines, and the like. Dallas Page tries to get the charisma up to about a 10. Vinny Vegas comes in, hits a bunch of power moves, including but not limited to the snake eyes. Um, I'd love to see the segment of a really bad idea, which was the arm wrestling tournament they were doing on a worldwide at the time in 1992. And arm wrestling between Tony Atlas and Vinny Vegas is something I seem to remember, but it's been almost 30 years. Needless to say, if I find that, that will definitely be reviewed here. Um, you know, basic arm work on page in the next couple of minutes. We have not seen the advent of the diamond cutter yet. We have not seen the advent of DDP really as a star yet. That's several years away. But you can see that the charisma is there, even if the gimmick and the way of approaching it is wrong. Uh, Dallas Page basically does a post-match interview where he complains about uh, the underestimation of his team. Then we see Cactus Jack promising that the Barbarian is going to take care of Ron Simmons, and Simmons taking a bunch of matches before the Halloween Havoc pay-per-view is, in the demented mind of Cactus Jack, a bad idea, which in theory would be, in fact, true. Uh, then we go to another match here, Tony Atlas who comes out with the Barbarian, who I guess is kind of semi-managed by Cactus Jack, although um, Jack is not out there with them at this particular case. Jeff Daniels and T.A. McCoy, the enhancement talent uh, uh, fought by both of these men. Tony L. is going by early in 1993, maybe by the spring of 93. Barbarian again getting ready for the Ron Simmons championship match in just a couple of weeks here. Punch, kick, punch, kick, Barbarian made to look strong, although the the enhancement talent could have done a significantly better job selling for the Barbarian here. Uh, Barbarian eventually gets a kick off and gets a victory there. Uh, I don't know who actually thought that the match with these folks would have been compelling enough that fans would have bought the idea of the Barbarian as a world champion, but it is what it is. Uh, early match of the Hollywood Blondes before they're named, uh, the Hollywood Blondes. As a matter of fact, Flying Brian, not even getting a last name on the graphic, and Steve Austin is here. Non-title match as, uh, Armstrong and uh, Rhodes is there. Odd, because apparently, uh, apparently, um, Barry Windham had not appeared, so that is the... Reason for the non-title nature of the match. Um, that eventually comes into alignment later. Anyway, uh, Rhodes and Austin go at it for a little bit here. Armstrong manages to try to tag in. Armstrong, of course, having previous week's matches with Pillman in singles competition. So the partnership makes some semblance of sense. Um, in any event, Arm, uh, Rhodes tries to make a tag, backdrops Austin over. Austin and Rhodes at this time, 92-93. One of my favorite feuds in the, in the derivation of things. Uh, brawling to the outside. Anyway, a, um, bailout by what later becomes the Hollywood Blondes leads to some speculation that their, uh, team may not be on the best of pages. But it is what it is as far as everybody's concerned. And uh, we kind of get a, um, you know, Brian Pillman trying to get Brad Armstrong to shake hands. Armstrong not quite that dumb. Uh, we then see Pillman 
trying to stall some and gets in there with Dustin Rhodes. Rhodes, obviously the leader of the Armstrong team, just by pecking order alone. Um, Pillman using more heel tactics, although the team of he and Austin have not officially been made yet. I don't know that that happens until sometime early 1993, so probably a few months away. Maybe this was even a trial run. Gut wrench suplex by Austin on Rhodes, and uh, the fire up of Rhodes is pretty, I won't call it legendary, but it's there. It's it's hungry looking, and uh, um, in the end, that's what's there. Um, toss to the outside, and there you go. Clotheslined by Pillman. Pillman with the running clothesline off the apron, which was kind of interesting. And then we see uh, in the final minutes or so of the match, uh, drop kicks by Brad Armstrong, who uh, is relatively happy with everything that's going on. Uh, cleans house, Pillman goes to the outside, punch to the midsection and a knee lift there. Barry Windham in the last 90 seconds of the program comes down, pulls Dustin Rhodes off of the apron, and they argue, um, uh, ostensibly, uh, Wyndham wondering why why Rhodes would, uh, in fact, team with somebody else at all. Um, anyway, so that's the close of that, and uh, we'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 